However, it is found in all the prophets before Islam and messengers. However, there are some verses within the Holy Quran that apparently imply that Prophet Adam and some other prophets who committed sin. Tonight's episode is an attempt to study the concept of Asma infallibility in the light of the Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum Welcome to the fourth episode of, the, of uh, Life from Karbala, Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, as I mentioned, it is the fourth night. Uh, so for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episodes, you can check out our YouTube page at Imam Hussein 3 TV uh, to check out the previous episodes. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let us welcome my dear guest and esteemed guest, Sayyid Hussain Al Ghazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. 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 Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sayyidina, just uh, a brief overview. In the first episode, we talked about Ramadan in the Quran. The second episode, we talked about Imama in the Quran. Uh, the third episode, we talked about uh, Shafa'a ah. Shafa in the Quran, in intercession. And today, inshallah, we want to talk about infallibility. Uh, within the Holy Quran, it's always good to keep in mind uh, that uh, a person is able to become fallible if he overcomes his desires and and uh, the pleasures that uh, you know any regular human uh, wants. But if we want to kick off today's episode, the first question would be: Is that what is infallibility, and why is it important? And also, does it mean that a person no longer has the ability? To sin, is that a virtue? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Al-asma, or infallibility, is a spiritual level in which a person has the ability to commit sins. If he wants to commit a sin, he could definitely, physically can commit a sin. Mm -hmm. He could drink, he could gamble, he could commit fornication or adultery. However, that spiritual level prevents him mm -hmm. from committing a sin. Yes. He's reached such a stage in which he does not desire sin. Mm -hmm. If he wanted to, he could, yes. but he no longer desires sin. He's protected from sin. Mm -hmm. This is what we call asma, infallibility. Of course, this is a, a position, a spiritual position that is granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't come for free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the spiritual level to those who feel, who he feels have earned it. He doesn't randomly pick. Mm -hmm. Those who have earned the level of asma, he bestows upon them that asma, mm -hmm. that infallibility. So it's not anyone, someone off the street. Just People that place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feel they have reached a stage in which they are worthy of asma, they are worthy of infallibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that purity and they become masul. Mm -hmm. It's a, to clarify, it's not... Uh, you, you know, it's not something that by chance. This quality does not come by chance. It's earned. Mm -hmm. It's earned. You have to earn this, this degree, this status. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala offers you al asma. Now, some scholars, you know, they they analyzed. They said, well, what is exactly infallibility? What are you talking about? Yes. This spiritual level. Mm -hmm. This spiritual degree. What is that spiritual degree that a person reaches in which he no longer commits sins, no longer desires sins, and will not take his uh, obligations lightly? Yes. He will take his obligations seriously, his fasting, his prayers, his hajj, his khums, his zakat. So he does everything that he has to do and he doesn't do anything that he should not do. How does this person attain infallibility? What is it? Is it, ma is it a magical spell? Mm -hmm. Is it something that Allah recites and this person all of a sudden becomes infallible? What is it exactly? 
Some scholars say that the reality of infallibility is actually knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon some people that are worthy. Why do I say that are worthy? So, no, so that no one will come and say, well, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a distinction happening. There, I'm sorry, discrimination happening. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave these people infallibility. Why doesn't he give these people infallibility? Yes. Why couldn't he make everyone infallible? Why? That's why I say infallibility is earned. It's mm -hmm. a degree that is earned by your actions, by your deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon some people knowledge. And that knowledge is what stops the infallible person from, from sinning. Why? Because, for example, stealing. An infallible person will never steal. Why? Because he has knowledge of stealing. Yes. He has knowledge of the reality of stealing. He sees how disgusting it is. Yes. What an ugly behavior it is. So immediately he'll be drawn away. He'll be repelled. He'll be disgusted. Yes. And so too all other, all other sins. Mm -hmm. It's his knowledge of good and evil that makes him more drawn to good and stay away from yes. it. Yes. It's knowledge. يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Don't we believe in this? Yes, we that do. That Allah Taala bestows wisdom and knowledge upon he uh, whom he wishes. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الله. Mm -hmm. The Quran says that Allah teaches you. If we agree that infallibility is a form of knowledge, mm -hmm. and knowledge is taught by Allah, Yes. This makes sense? It does. I think this, this clears a lot of confusion regarding infallibility. It does. Why some people are granted infallibility and others are not granted infallibility. Let me give you an example. If you go to a restaurant and there's two people. Two people go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. They go together. One of them goes in immediately, sits on the table and orders. The other person goes to the washroom to wash his hands. He passes by the kitchen. And he decides to take a look in the kitchen. What's happening? He goes inside and he sees that the cook and, and the, the chefs and his assistants are cooking the food without gloves. Not just that, but their hands are dirty. They just came out of the restroom without washing their hands. Wow, that's disgusting. This is good for those that are having iftar right now. Yeah. To make them stop eating a little bit. <laughs> Disgusting hands, dirty hands. And uh, the cook has long hair and his hair is falling all over the food. And wow, <laughs> that's graphic. <laughs> and then, you know, water pours on the food. You know, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. And then he brings out the dish and he brings it on the table. Wow. These two friends, they came together. Who's going to eat? Who's not going to eat? Well, the person who checked it out. Of the one who didn't see, the yeah. one who's clueless, he's going to eat the whole thing. Definitely. Because he's starving and he's fasting. The person who saw yeah. isn't going to have a single bite to eat. Definitely. Why? Because he saw what's in this food. So he's not even going to crave this food. He doesn't even need to push himself. No, he doesn't crave this food. This is knowledge. Infallibility is similar to this. Mm -hmm. It's similar to this. It's when you see the reality of this action. Others who are not infallible, they don't see the reality. They think it's fun. Uh, backbiting, it's fun. It's enjoyable. But a person who is infallible, he sees the reality of backbiting and yeah. gossip yes. and ghibah. Just as the Quran says, An infallible person will not say ghibah because it's as if he could see with his own eyes that he's eating the flesh, the, wow. the dead flesh of his brother. Wow. This is, this is asma. Yes. That's why this person who is not infallible, he doesn't have knowledge, will go ahead and commit all kinds of sins because he lacks that knowledge and foresight, while the person who's infallible has the knowledge, 
will take a step back. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, this is what infallibility means. Now, why is it so important? Why is infallibility so important? Why is it discussed? And why do we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, we emphasize on infallibility while others, they, some, some of them even reject infallibility. Yeah, they, they do. They say infallibility do doesn't even exist. Yes. There's no such thing as infallible people except a couple, except prophets, and their infallibility is, uh, you know, shady. Yeah. It's not full it infallibility. It depends on re revelation. And exactly. Whatever they we'll talk about this in a minute. Inshallah. Why is this so important? Because if we prove that some people after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, were infallible, mm -hmm. what does infallibility mean? It means they're sinless. Yes. It means they do not commit sins whatsoever. If we prove that some people are infallible and others are not, doesn't this mean that these people should be followed? Definitely. And others should not be followed? Definitely. So the question of leadership will arise. And the question of infallibility will take us to the question of leadership. leadership. Yeah. If we prove that this person was infallible and that person was not infallible, then why haven't we been following this person the whole time? Th th this whole time. Wow. Instead of following this person. So you see, the topic of infallibility has a political aspect to it. It has a political aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Well, f what I understood from uh, the meaning or the definition you gave to and the examples that you provided is that the power of Asma does not uh, well does not make the ma'asum person incapable of committing sin. No. It's by his complete power and will. Absolutely. And uh, if otherwise, there's no merit of being a ma'asum. No. If everything is... is uh, You'd right be like angels. Yeah. Angels do not sin either, but it's not a virtue. It's to enforced be an on them to not sin. It's enforced on them because they do not have desires. Allah subhanahu wa has taken all the desires away yes. from them. So it's not a virtue. Mm -hmm. Angels don't have a virtue over mm -hmm. human beings. They don't sin, but they don't sin not by not by virtue, but by you know by predestination. Mm -hmm. They're destined not to sin. Definitely. Well, we believe that asma. No, it's a choice. At the end of the day, you have a choice. Yeah. An infallible person can't sin if he wants, but he no longer desires sin because yeah. of the knowledge that he's attained. He no longer desires sinning. Mm -hmm. Well, right there, uh, if we want to make this. Uh, you know these assertions 100% and want to provide proofs I mean as Muslims uh, we can say the majority you just mentioned that some people refute the aspect and the concept of infallibility uh, and that's within the religion of Islam Muslims do some Muslims do uh, refute that concept but if we want to go as Muslims we believe that the prophets all the prophets 124,000 prophets are infallible are there any evidences and proofs from the Quran that indicate the infallibility of, of, of the prophets? Several. Mm -hmm. We have several proof from the Qur'an. We have proof from the Qur'an that um, all prophets in general are infallible. Mm -hmm. Not just prophets, imams as well. Prophets and imams. And we have specific proof regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Let's see. Let's see. Number one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim La yanalu ahdi al-Zalimin Transgressors, oppressors will n cannot have, cannot be my representatives La yanalu ahdi Ahdullah It means to represent Allah on the face of this earth To speak in His name To act by His name To mm -hmm. say that Allah says this, Allah says that Allah tells us to do this, Allah tells us not to do that. The spokesman for Allah. To, to be a spokesman for Allah. Mm -hmm. This is ah Ahdullah. La yanalu ah ahdul zalimin. Oppressors cannot be spokesmen in my name. They cannot be my representatives. Like, who are the representatives of Allah? Who? Prophets, messengers. Imams, as we, as we talked when we spoke about yes, imamah. Yes, we talked about a couple of nights ago. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the qualities of an imam. We briefly spoke about infallibility. Yes. But tonight we're, we're, tonight we're talking in, you know, in detail. لا ينال عهد الظالمين An oppressor cannot be a spokesman or a representative for Allah Azza wa Jal. And we, we discussed this. What is mm -hmm. the meaning of oppressor? We said there's three kinds of oppressors. Yes. A person who oppresses others. A person who oppresses himself and a person who oppresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you oppress Allah by disobeying Him. You oppress yourself by disobeying Allah mm -hmm. because you're exposing yourself to the punishment of Allah. And you oppress others by, there's lots of ways of oppressing mm -hmm. others. Can I just, uh, if you can clear up um, some misconfusion. Uh, oppressing Allah, what does that mean? Because uh, can, can Allah be oppressed? Yes. Allah oppressed, not in the physical term. Uh, you might be thinking in the physical term of oppression, you know, like someone beating, beating someone. No, that's that's an oppression. Another form well, of oppression. Ver various types of oppression. When yeah. a a slave disobeys his master, that's oppression towards his master. Mm -hmm. When a leader does not listen to his followers, when a president of a country does not listen to his followers, that's oppression to his followers. Okay. When the needs of uh, the citizens are not met that's oppression oppression is not just physical mm -hmm. it's emotional it's it's intellectual there's uh, many forms of oppression yes when a slave disobeys his master that's oppression towards the master yeah we oppress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by disobeying him mm -hmm. this is ghulb. this is ghulb. when we commit a sin we're also oppressing ourselves mm -hmm. so however you look at it a person who sins is an oppressor it's an oppressor. Yes. This is one. That's one. Two, a verse specifically regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mm -hmm. However, we could, you know, we could generalize and say that this goes for all prophets as well. The Quran says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حسنة. Then in Rasulullah, you will find a great example. Example. If Rasulullah would sin, Mm -hmm. Lie, cheat, backbite, gossip, steal, fornicate. Would he be a good example for people? Definitely not. Absolutely not. When Allah SWT says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That means Rasulullah is perfect. That's the only way he could be an uswa. He could be an example mm -hmm. for the people. You cannot be an example when you're just like the rest. If the, you, you sin, you yeah. cheat, you lie, you mm -hmm. backbite, you, you deceive. You see, yeah. being a good example means that you're a perfect human being. Nothing bad comes from you. So we could we could benefit from this verse. Mm -hmm. We could use this verse. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, even if we didn't have verses in the Quran, if we didn't have la ina hasan, we have rational proof that a prophet has to be infallible has to be sinless. Why? Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet, and this prophet is not sinless, mm -hmm. he's an ordinary human being. Ordinary hum human being, that means he could cheat, he could deceive, he could steal, and yeah. he could lie. If a prophet has the ability to lie, there's a chance he li Of course, even infallible prophets, mm -hmm. they have the ability to lie, but Definitely. they don't. Yes. But let's say he's not infallible. Mm -hmm. That means some days he lies, some days he doesn't lie. Now he's claiming to be a prophet. He says, oh people, I've, I'm delivering for you a message from Allah Azza wa This is his book. Could this be a lie or can it be a lie? Well, either, either a lie or a lie. It could absolutely be, be a lie, excuse me. It could be a lie. Mm -hmm. So how could we trust him? That means that 124,000 prophets, all of them could be liars. If they could be liars, how can we trust them? Definitely. It means they have to be infallible. Logically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to send us someone who is infallible, who never lies, who doesn't cheat, who doesn't deceive, who is not a crook. Otherwise, if he lies, why how do we know that this is a Quran? Why, why, why send a messenger? Why send a messenger? This is one. Two, the messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends tells us, don't cheat, don't steal, don't fornicate, don't gamble. If he's not infallible and he does all of these things, he cheats and he tells people don't cheat. He gambles and he tells people don't gamble. He commits adultery and he tells people don't commit adultery. What effect is that going to have? That's going to be meaningless. Definitely. People are going to tell him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from out of all the people he sent you, a person who gambles, you're telling us not to gamble? Oh. You commit adultery and you're telling us not, not to commit adultery? What effect is that going to have? That's not going to have any effect. Thus, logically, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise. Definitely. Is all wise. If I want to tell my children, you know, don't watch TV. I can't watch TV myself. I'm a normal human being. I'm an ordinary human. If I want my word to be effective with my children, definitely. If I want to tell them, don't watch children, I can't watch. Uh, don't watch TV. I can't watch TV myself. Allah subhanahu wa taala that wants people to be good, shouldn't He send messengers that are good themselves? Definitely, absolutely. It's logical. Absolutely. It's logical. This is rational proof. This is rational proof. Mm -hmm. uh, Sayyidina, I would like to mention a verse uh, when we'll go into a break and come back to the discussion. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in chapter 4 verse 80 and whoever ob obeys the messenger has actually obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we do see an infallible is a leader and you know we can't have re we can't have it any other way but we'll inshallah continue the discussion after the short break so respected viewers uh, do stay tuned with us uh, for you are going to be presented with live footages from inside the holy shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam so to that we'll be back shortly <laughs>
respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed that short report. Uh, it's actually a blessing uh, to, you know, to provide you with live footages uh, from inside the Holy Shrine of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's very important to actually take the, uh, the opportunity and uh, take advantage to send your salams and salutations to Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam from abroad. I mean, uh, yes, we can't, well, we can, but you guys can't actually physically come and visit him here in the Holy Shrine, but you can do, do so spiritually as uh, provided uh, via television. But back to the discussion with my dear guest, Sayyid Hussein Qazmini, welcome back, Habib Sayyidina. Thank you. Mawafaq, inshallah. Uh, Sayyidina, before the break, we provided some evidences and, and some proofs uh, from the Holy Quran regarding the infallibility of the prophets and what infallibility is and why it is important within the religion of Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states uh, within the Holy Quran that Prophet Muhammad, our Prophet, the last messenger that Allah sent, is similar to the prophets who came before him. And thus, according to the verses that you mentioned, we understand that they are infallible. This is where the confusion is raised. Is that what about the verses that say that some prophets sinned, disobeyed, forgot and sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I mean, doesn't that contradict the, the, the other verses when we do see prophets being, you know, uh, you know, having sins or have been sinned? Mm. Um, let's, let's first look at those verses that imply that some of the prophets committed sins mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll see, is that what the verses are trying to say mm -hmm. or they mean something else? For example, regarding Prophet Adam alayhi yes. salam. Uh, yes. One of the verses says, وَعَصَى Adam رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى Adam disobeyed his Lord. فَتَلَقَى Adam رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ mm -hmm. Allah forgave Adam. So here he disobeyed, here Allah forgives him. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They said, Adam and Eve, that, O oh Lord, if you don't forgive us and you don't have mercy on us, then we'll be among the losers. Mm -hmm. So if you don't forgive us, again. Uh, وَلَقَدْ عَهَدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمٍ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا Adam forgot. forgot. Regarding Musa, when Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he, he saw an Egyptian and an Israeli fighting, the Israeli from his tribe. He asked him for help. He went to help the Israeli man. He punched the, the Egyptian and he killed him. It was an accident. It was an accident. It wasn't, it wasn't on purpose. So he said, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرِي Oh Allah, I have oppressed myself. See again, the sin oppressed uh, because if it's a sin, then he oppressed himself. Uh, so forgive me. Regarding Yunus alayhi salam, subhanaka kuntu minal zalimin. I was among the oppressors. How do we explain these verses? Sometimes, you know, we could give a general answer regarding all of these verses. Mm -hmm. We could say that in all of these verses, the prophets did not commit a sin. You see, we have something very, we have logical proof. When there is logical proof, and there's a verse that contradicts that logical proof, we have no choice but, but to reinterpret the verse. You might say, well, that, that just means you're, you're abandoning the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. You're defining the Qur'an according to how you feel, according yeah. to your opinion. No. No, this is not how it is. There's logical proof. When there's logical proof, that means the verse does not want this meaning, the apparent meaning that you think. It means something else. I'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ if we want to take this verse literally, what does it mean? It's the hand of God. The hand of Allah is above their hands. What does this mean? That means that Allah has a physical appearance. Has a physical appearance, has a physical body, has a hand. However, because we have logical proof, rational proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a body. Because if he has a body, that means 
He has he's a space. Limited. That means he's limited. That means he fills a space. That means he's limited. He can't be a God. Mm-hmm. This rational proof helps us reinterpret the verse. That it doesn't literally mean the hand of God. It means the authority of God. Yes. The power of God. Because the hand is, simple of, uh, is a symbol of power. power and authority. Same here. These verses, because they contradict a rational proof, that means they mean something else. The verse is trying to say something else. What? Our scholars say, they call it Tark al-Awla. Mm-hmm. That means that the prophets here did not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they, they did not disobey a command from Allah, a direct command and an explicit command. Rather, they rejected a recommendation. Mm-hmm. A recommendation was given to them that it's better for you to do this. But the Prophet didn't listen. He decided not to take the recommendation. Is that sinning? That's not sinning. That's not sinning? No, that's not sinning. How is it not sinning? Because it's just a recommendation. Mm-hmm. It's not, a, it's not a, an enforced recommendation. It's not an obligation. It's a recommendation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam, it's better for you not to eat from the tree. Because if you eat from the tree, you'll have to leave paradise. Adam decided to eat from the tree. He didn't take this recommendation. But wasn't he punished? Adam was punished. Ah, the punishment, it's a natural consequence. Mm-hmm. That you eat from the tree, you'll have to leave. And Adam knew about this consequence. He decided he not to take the recommendation. So he had to leave. Yes, as sometimes when you don't take a person's recommendation, you're punished. For example, I'm applying for a, for a, a top university. I'm applying to Harvard. My father tells me, get a recommendation letter from that college professor. I don't listen. I don't take the recommendation letter. I get, did, did, I, I get a decline. Mm-hmm. I, I get rejected. That's a punishment because mm-hmm. I didn't take the recommendation. You see? Same thing with Yusuf, same thing with Musa. With Musa, it's clear that it wasn't even a sin because Musa did not even intend on killing that person. Zalam to nafsi, I oppress myself. Why? Because he, he got in trouble with the authorities. Because mm. he got in trouble with the authorities. So, zalam to nafsi. Faghfirli, help me get out of this situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, go towards Madian, leave the city. And others. Subhanak inni kuntu min al with Yunus. Then, <coughs> let's not forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purposely has made some verses ambiguous for people mm-hmm. to ponder, for people to think. Minhu ayat, huwa alladhi anzal alayka al kitab, minhu ayatun muhkamat wa ukharu mutashabihat. Some verses are ambiguous, they could have several meanings. Someone who's naive, doesn't have a lot of knowledge, doesn't have in-depth knowledge of the Qur'an, will think of him. Or take it by the cover. Take it by the cover. Well, the verse has another meaning. These verses are meant to be ambiguous. Also, another explanation for these verses. You see, Sahih, Musa says, ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ uh, Adam seeks forgiveness. Musa seeks forgiveness. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they've committed a sin. It doesn't necessarily mean they com- committed a sin. If I bump into you in the street, I didn't do it on purpose. But do I say I'm sorry? Yes. yes. I say I'm, I, out of courtesy. If you're someone who's polite, you say I'm sorry. Even though I, you didn't do it on purpose. If I accidentally drop your phone and I break it, I didn't do it on purpose. But I'm going to what? But isn't that considered a mistake? Apologize. We'll talk about this in a minute. Okay. A mistake is one thing. You see, infallibility is not on, not all on one. In, in the, in, they're not infallibility is not on, on one, one degree, on one level. Mm-hmm. And I believe we're we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Inshallah. Musa alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam would forget. Fanasiya, wa laqad ahadna ila Adam min qabl. Fanesia, mm-hmm. you forgot. He ate from the tree. This is possible, but he didn't. He didn't commit any sin. Musa didn't commit any sin. Sometimes you seek forgiveness for something 
it's out of courtesy, not because you've done something wrong. For example, uh, if I'm ill, I have back pain, or I'm in a hospital, God forbid, God anyone is in the hospital. Someone comes in and visits you, a scholar comes in and visits you, someone respected comes in, you can't stand. Obviously, mm -hmm. you just came out of a surgery, for example. Mm -hmm. But what do you tell the guest? Forgive me, forgive me, I can't stand. Have you done something to seek forgiveness? No. No, but you say it out of courtesy. People that are polite, they have manners, they'll seek forgiveness and apologize even for the smallest things. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a saying that says, Hasanatul Abrar Sayyatul Muqarrabin. There's two people. Mm -hmm. A good deed for this person and is considered a bad deed for the other person. It's considered a bad deed for them. Let me give you an example. If I pray Salat al layl tonight, mm -hmm. and I take an exa exactly an hour to pray Salat al layl for me, that's great. For me and people like me, human beings, to pray Salat al layl in the middle of the night for one hour, that's what? It's that's huge. an excellent job. Yes. But for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to pray for one hour of Salat al layl that's shameful. Wow. If Rasulullah were to pray Salat al for only one hour, he would seek forgiveness from that Salah. He would be ashamed of that Salah. He would apologize for that Salah. He would pray and then apologize to Allah. But this is my, if my Salat al-Maghrib takes 30 minutes with all the mustahabbat, with, with, with all the recommended things. Slowly prayers. Slowly. For me, that's great. Mm -hmm. For Imam Ali, he'll be ashamed of such a Salah. Yeah. He'd have to seek forgiveness from such a Salah and apologize. You see, for us, eating from the tree might not be a big deal, but for Musa, for Adam, it was a big deal. For Musa to kill someone accidentally, accidentally killing someone, that's not a big deal. It's a big deal taking away his life, but it's not a crime. But for Musa, he wanted to seek forgiveness, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The prophets, they would seek forgiveness and apologize for the smallest things, even if they're not, even if they're not considered sins. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not a sin, he would still apologize. So just because he says, فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَاغْفِرْ لِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْ doesn't mean that he committed a sin. Mm -hmm. He's apologizing for something that he shouldn't have done. It would have been better, I say better, it should have been better that he, he should have done something else. Mm -hmm. But not that he shouldn't have done that whatsoever. No, because it wasn't a sin. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of levels, I know you mentioned uh, levels. Uh, going back to a point, I would like to mention something uh, I quoted from uh, a book. It says that, I don't want to mention the sect or the, the, the school of thought, but some believe that the Prophet is sinless or infallible only in the delivery of Allah's message. And uh, other than that, I mean, he's a regular person who sins, who commits, you know, any, any shameful act or, or whatever. But on the other hand, we believe otherwise, that he's infallible, you know, from before his his prophethood That's you right. know b uh, Nuh, before he, he was sent the message to go and you know build the ark or before he started preaching to 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 his nation prophet muhammad we see that but every prophet has his own uh domain if you will and his own uh nation or it's the word's not on my tongue right now but if we want to talk about the levels of prophets, you mentioned that earlier. The level of infallibility. I know that some prophets, uh, we said that they did not sin, but they've committed a mistake or they left a recommendation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are those the same as the prophets who were not mentioned as, you know, the ones who actually sinned or, you know, uh, you know sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are there levels of infallibility from the Quran? First, allow me to say that the topic of infallibility, it's a controversial topic. It is. Sunnis and Shias, they, they both agree that prophets have, have a level of infallibility. Yes. But they disagree so on the levels extent. of infallibility. Yes. We followers of Ahlul Bayt, we believe that prophets are infallible, meaning before they became prophets and after they became prophets. They're sinless. 
small sins or big sins Rasulullah in religious matters or in political matters doesn't matter Rasulullah whether it's in the matter of delivering the message or something that hasn't doesn't have to do with the message the Prophet is infallible in all aspects of his life even if it doesn't have anything to do with the Rasala with delivering the message and so on and so forth however while others believe that no mm -hmm. uh, the topic of infallibility is you know is debated some of them say that the prophets before being a prophet they were not infallible but once they became prophets they became infallible mm -hmm. some say prophets don't commit big sins but they might commit small sins others say that uh, um, they're only infallible in delivering the message yes. meaning they don't lie mm -hmm. they don't lie they deliver the message correctly but they might commit other sins so like a parrot I'm sorry so they're like a parrot yes they they say as they're told but they're just uttered. that's about it we believe that no prophets are sinless from the beginning till the end before they became prophets and after they became prophets big sins and small sins uh, even before becoming a prophet if someone is a liar before becoming a prophet and then all of a sudden he became a prophet, he becomes a good person. If he lied before, why can't he lie now? Yeah. How could we trust him now? That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he was known as a sadiq al amin before. before becoming a prophet. Yes. That's why when he became a prophet, no one could deny. Mm -hmm. No one could tell him you're lying. He was called a magician, a sorcerer, but they couldn't tell him you're lying because they knew he wasn't li a liar. Yes. We could say that infallibility is not all on one level. Infallibility has various levels. There is one infallibility, the, the minor, the, the, the least level of infallibility is not sinning, not committing sins, and doing the things that you have to do. Another level of infallibility is not even thinking about sinning, not even thinking about sinning. Um, another level of infallibility is not even making mistakes there's one level you could make a mistake a mis mistake meaning not on purpose mm -hmm. but deliberately you will, you will never commit a sin but by mistake you might commit a mistake there's another, um, another level of infallibility in which you don't even make a mistake you don't forget perfect perfect human being that top level infall of infallibility was for Rasulullah sallallahu mm -hmm. He didn't make a mistake. He would never forget. Perfect human being. He would not commit sins. He would not even think about committing sins. While there are other levels of infallibility, for example, the infallibility of Adam is not compared to the infallibility of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Adam did not commit a sin, but he did not take the recommendation by Allah. Rasulullah would never do that. Musa alayhi salam taraka al-awla. He, he didn't take a recommendation. Rasulullah would not do that. Yusuf, Yunus, other prophets. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the best of all prophets. They're all sinless, but being sinless and infallible has, has Level. various levels. Mm -hmm. They have various levels. We have to recognize that. Okay. But uh, we have approximately... Uh, a couple of minutes left, two minutes left. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, a related topic to what we're talking about. Some people refute the fact that, uh, you know, they accept it. They might accept that prophets, okay, that they are infallible and the verses that you provided are infallible. But when it comes to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt Islam, or Ahlul Bayt in general, the 14 Ma'sumin, are they infallible and precise evidence from the Quran uh, if we can be quick we have ayat al tatheer in surah al ahzab verse 34 i believe innama yuridu allah liyudhiba ankum al rijs ahl al bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira first of all who are the ahl al bayt the verse is speaking in in a male male pronoun innama yuridu allah liyudhiba ankum the other verses are speaking about the wives of Rasulullah. This section is talking about Ankum. Ankum al Ritza al Bayt. Uyatahirakum. Na'utahirakun. Na'utahirakun. So that means there is men. 
Scholars say this is the Ahlul Bayt. Rasulullah, Amir al-Mu'minin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima al-Zahra, al-Hasan wa al-Hussein. Yudhiba ankum al-Rijs. Rijs is anything impure, improper, spiritually unclean and corrupt. Yudhiba ankum al-Rijs, Ahlul Bayt. Allah wants to purify you and clean you. وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِرَ أَنْفِي And in case people did not understand the first section, إِنَّمَا يُرِدُ اللَّهُ يُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرَّيْتِ سَأَهْلَ بِهِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِرَ And purify you. Purify you from what? Were they dirty? Were they unclean? No. Purify you from sins. Yes. And we go back to what we said in the beginning, that this form of purification is with knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the Ahlul Bayt knowledge that others didn't have. And this knowledge made them pure. This knowledge made them ma'asum. Mm -hmm. Also, further proof of the infallibility of the Imams, specifically Imam Ali. Ayat al Mubahala. Faqul ta'ala wa nad'u abna'ana wa abna'akum wa nisa'ana wa anfusakum wa anfusana wa anfusakum. Imam Ali is the self of Rasulullah. And we said Rasulullah is what? Infallible. Infallible. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَأَسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So Imam Ali has also, also has to be what? Mm-hmm. Infallible. Infallible. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهِ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ وَأُولُوا الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ O you who believe, obey Allah, obey His Messenger, and obey أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Those who are in charge. أُولِي الْأَمْرِ Those who are the decision makers. We believe these are the Imams. Of course, this, this verse in itself requires a debate of its own. A huge debate. Uh, but in general, we are asked to obey Allah, the Messenger, and the Imams. How can the Imam not be infallible and we have to obey him? Obey someone who's sinful, Definitely. who sins. That means he first has to be infallible, sinless, then we, so obey, we him. obey him. Because if he's not infallible, what if he orders us to drink? To drink. Do we still obey him? So, so he has so. to be perfect. Definitely. He has to be infallible. Mm-hmm. Also, we have Hadith al Thaqalain. Any Tarakum Fikum al Thaqalain, Kitab Allah, who Atrati Alabeti, Ma and Tamasaktum Behima, Lentabalu Badi. We are asked to hold on to the Quran and to the family. Yes. Hold on to, to them together. together. If the Ahlil Bayt would commit sins, would would Rasulullah order us to hold on to them? And they're equal to the Qur'an. And they're and equal. Is the the Qur'an, Qur'an is sinless. The Qur'an is infallible, meaning it is perfect. Mm-hmm. That means the Ahlul Bayt have to be perfect. If the Qur'an is perfect, mm-hmm. So that means the Ahlul Bayt also have to be perfect. The same way that the Qur'an is perfect. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Thank you very much, Sayyidina, for uh, enlightening us with these information. I mean, some people... Uh, lack such information alhamdulillah I, I've benefited a lot from what you said because uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you get you've been asked a question and uh, the answers you've provided are perfect for these questions because yeah, sometimes we can't answer uh, thank you very much for joining Allah us tonight may Allah bless you uh, for your hard work uh, respected viewers thank you very much for joining us tonight if you weren't able to view this episode or the previous episodes you can check out our YouTube page uh, YouTube channel sorry at Mahatim CTV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La ilaha illa Allah. Ya khayr al-ghafirin. Ya khayr al-fatihin. Ya khayr al-nasirin. Ya khayr al-hakimin. Allah hamdan lillah. Allah hamdan lillah.